which is really what it is. You're shorting silver uh, to, to buy gold. Now he's seeing the inverse. What you're seeing in the shorter term from a physical market perspective, can you share with us on the physical uh, market perspective? Sure. And, and, and that's true because, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, look, every professional out there has their own charting software, um, technicals that they follow. But the important thing to know is where's the physical support? Where is the central bank support? Where is the, where are these aggregations? Because you can have a technical chart that will not be breached or will get breached because there is a lack of, or because there is support there, it will hold. So, so look, I'll share what, <coughs> I'll just share what we and our connected, well, well connected liquidity providers are seeing. But with that in mind, and in lockstep with every first tier bank uh, on, on, on top of really no one, never to be sold physical holdings. No one is selling any physical gold holdings. You've got to be aware of that. No first tier bank is. So what are we doing? We're doing what all the other guys are doing. We're holding all our positions. Um, long term, long and strong, uh, while very short term, well, yeah, there's expected to be some opportunities to add gold and silver into, there's bound to be attempts um, to contain last week's 2000 spot gold level. Well, you're just getting it breached now here. So <laughs> great, if they can't control, c c contain that, we're going to get a higher stair step. So this is so in, in gold, that's 2000. In silver, they were trying to cap 2400, just getting through now, breaking through again. They've been, br really, it's about, you know, we've had also, we've had China on holiday uh, until um, Wednesday night. So we've also had illiquid conditions. So you've got the usual gaming going on. So, but once 24 uh, breaches and holds, then these derivative resistance levels, which are just paper positions, uh, opens up very large short stops. In other words, these are the bets where you need to unwind these these bets against those prices being breached, and they're just above these levels. So, very we've got a really explosive situation here on our hands. So, very short term for gold, and as we assessed last time, we've got this T plus two spot demand being crystallized at every single. Basel III compliant PM fix. And it's forcing market making bullion banks and the liquidity providers to hedge this constantly rolling physical delivery exposure. It relentlessly comes in. So whatever price they, they, they want to play the paper game, there is the right to take delivery. That's what's happening. And this will serve to cement a significantly higher stair step into what is always an obligatory non-farm payrolls gaming on Friday. Well, maybe they capitulate, then don't do it this time. But in all of history, they've always played a paper game into non-farm payrolls. In fact, many central banks and sovereigns sit back and large buyers just wait back and let it play out because we'll be there. But maybe not. Maybe the first year banks are really concerned this time because they're exposed to, they haven't, this is the first year they've been exposed to Basel III delivery uh, requirements. So drilling down uh, under the smoke and mirrors market action, we continue to evidence the bullish paper market footprints. And this will mean something for the options traders that follow us. And I'm sorry, everyone else, I'll keep it brief. Options, I know we don't want to talk about it, but when we saw the April gold contract, this is important for the, I'm sure a lot of the, the, the professional traders would know this, but it's interesting. But when we saw this contract, the April gold contract, which just expired and is now in delivery, move into delivery a few days ago, despite a significantly call put options imbalance, where, in other words, we had 120 tons of expiring paper gold contracts converted into a delivery contract versus just eight tons choosing to deliver this non-delivery paper structure, it raised a red flag, especially as JP Morgan, the agent bank, alone, this is an agent bank who alone controls just themselves well over 50% of the Western metals markets, paper, gold, and silver derivative positions. So historically, what do we expect? Because this is not real bullion, it would ordinarily have indicated downside, deliberately disruptive air pockets. In other words, you're a market maker, you can pull your bids uh, and you can create an air pocket. 
and and you 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 know where you stop where the stops are for the speculators you know that they're long and they have a margin position and they borrowed this this position and they you can usually take them out but and we saw that in both gold and silver but in this case when weighed up against the extremely tight strong demand delivery market which the same insiders are exposed to we anticipate we really kind of anticipated this time that any bid pulling rollover gaming would be limited to the very few non-sticky speculators. In other words, the rinsable speculators, not the sticky ones that are not moving anywhere. And, and it would, it would, that means it would be relatively shallow. It was. And it, it's a really good sign that the paper market is struggling to contain a very much more physically driven market. So this change in behavior looks to be playing out into a very strong physical demand market. But we do expect some participants to be sitting on the sidelines into this holiday shortened week. So, you know, want to know short term, non-farm payroll comes in on a U.S. market holiday. Uh, there's going to be no um, PM or silver fixes, uh, no gold or silver fixes uh, from Thursday onwards. So you've got Friday's a holiday, Monday's a holiday in the U.K. too. So you're going to have no fixes. So it's going to be a liquid. So <laughs> could this offer an opportunity to add some more and take some more off the cartel? And if you are a stacker, who cares? It's cheap already compared to the real price of gold and silver, which nobody knows that price. So whoever, whoever you are, you don't know that price. Sticky specs, that is the ones that you cannot rinse, with a longer term view, had already rolled their their uh, their April contracts. They weren't going to take delivery, but they just want to ride the price. And, and it, or it's a hedged position to, to a risk position. It, th these contracts are are locked in. They rolled into the June contract, which now everyone has rolled into, uh, uh, well before delivery. And they took, they look, what they're doing is looking for much higher prices while the remaining delivery open interest, what in other words, what has yet to be delivered is largely in the hands of the market making insiders exposed to this T plus two NSFR compliance spot delivery overhang. So we will continue to expect 1950 to provide very strong support and it already did this week uh, into monday when we saw this crosses being roiled and while we always expect volatility around the round numbers you know, 24 25 26 you know in silver 2000 in gold whatever we see the option sweet spot aggregating higher to 2050 now now that is like much higher than it was it's about a hundred dollars higher than it was just last month now this settles as this settles in the next central bank supported stair step comes in and then if it is watch out above wow this has been a, a big episode with a lot of uh, chaos that you're untangling here andrew but i just can't let you go before you take a deeper look at what's happening at my <laughs> favorite topic which is of course silver and to all the silver stackers out there, you want to listen to this very carefully. Over to you, Andy. Yeah, we love silver, don't we? Yes, Shane, I, I, I know you do. I mean, and there's never a day that goes by where we don't talk about silver. But yeah, notably, really, silver has been acting relatively better than the current in-delivery gold uh, contract, futures contract. Um, and what that reflects is an extreme, and I mean extreme in capitals, uh, silver wholesale market tightness, and that confluences with uh, very depleted COMEX open interests. I, uh, so in other words, the, the, uh, what is registered and able to be delivered in the COMEX is far too little to be delivered. All, all of this is, con is really constraining insiders sell efforts as they're forced to adjust their bearish derivative bets higher because you can't, you don't want to open up the back door for somebody to come in and take it off you. So silver is expected to continue to outperform gold into what is really an insider move to unwind the ratio trade. And if you remember what the ratio trade is simply uh, where you're um, basically, we've seen the, the amount of ounces of silver it's taken to buy an ounce of gold should be 11, 12, maybe 16 to 1. It's been up to 120 to 1. It's been recently in the 90s beginning to get unwound. We knew that this, we said, this has to get unwound because if you want silver, 
then that's the next trade you go in and start to um, attack. And while this unwind of silver shorts, which is really what it is, you're shorting silver uh, to, to buy gold. Now we're seeing the inverse. So obviously when you're buying back these shorts, you're selling gold. So this is kind of assisted. This is the reason why it's outperformed gold very, very short term. But all the time, there's buyers coming into gold. So, But this is a good sign that insiders are busy clearing these very stale, bearish paper bets in silver into a very strong Asian physical market. So as we assessed last time, <clears throat> there was really no reason for insiders to see silver before below 24 at the end of last month. And it did hold above that level. And then we saw some gaming and the usual paper market um, gaming ahead of non-farm payrolls. Hey, but look like it's blasting through again. I'm not counting out, but really the option structure, really once we see tw this 24 breached, it's really looking more like 26 right now, which should be more comfortable. Remember we said 24 would hold because the insiders were, were basically, they didn't need it below 24. Now we're looking that they probably don't need it below 26. Now, as far as silver is concerned though, a hold of 24 opens up 26, which is the last line of defense before what we call a gap close all the way into 2012. And that sell trigger, you can look at any chart, you go to 2012 and you can see that's where the sell trigger happened. Gaps get closed. 35 bucks is where that gap will get closed. So really, the trigger point, the exact trigger point, 26.225. Get above that, hold that for a pit close, 35. It has to be. So to sum up uh, what we see and expect, this is the strongest central bank related support for gold has now aggregated at 1930. And if you remember, that's a full $110 higher than what, what we evidenced on the 7th of March. Now, insiders, if you remember, we looked at this closely, they ran into central bank bidders. If you remember, we identified them, it was 1820. Now, while we do see some specs still left to rinse, we think 1930 will be significantly front run and footprints suggest any paper gold moves into down into 1950 is sufficient to really kind of run out the non sticky specs anyway. So very, very short term. Most paper market participants will be on the sidelines ahead of holiday market non-farm payrolls, or maybe they're running for the hills, but usually they're on the sidelines. So you may see a little bit of illiquid volatility, but with both gold and silver in such strong physical demand, the cartel will be very wary about wholesalers circling back to the back of the Kermex door for supply. So that leaves us only one question, guys. How much physical do you 